All right, so <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us here today for invoice training um, for the Grants For Me platform. Uh, we're gonna go over a couple things uh, that's really important to the new invoice system as invoicing is a, a bit different than what it has been in GEMS. And so we wanna make sure that we really stress what those differences are so that when you are submitting those invoices that they're not being kicked back, um, that they'll go through um, as quickly as humanly possible. Um, and we can only do that through providing, you know, training such as this. Um, so I'm in one of our districts on the test site, so it's not going to um, submit any invoices for real. Uh, we just want to make that very apparent. Um, so it, it, it does say test site up here. So um, if someone from Augusta is on, I, I apologize that I have to use your district. It was just the first one on the list uh, that I pulled up that had the pieces that we needed. So what we're going to do, um, in order to get to the invoices section, when you log into the Grants For Me system, is over on the left-hand navigation, there is a bar that uh, for invoices. Um, and then you just simply click um, invoices as well. And it'll bring you to this home screen. Uh, when you first get here, it might actually default to the 2022 um, invoices. And as you can see, um, there isn't an available budget because um, on the test site, uh, Augusta's application hasn't been finally approved. Once that final approval does go through, then those uh, numbers will show up. So we're gonna talk about the FY21 um, invoicing uh, to start, and then we'll kind of jump over into the FY22 because there is slight differences between the two. So we're gonna start with looking at just a kind of a general invoice. So that's, we're gonna use title one, uh, part A as our example. When you get into title one A, so when you click on that, it'll kind of give you an overview of where you're at. It brings in the substantial approval date. It tells you the project end date, um, and then your allocation amounts, and then the available budget. And so, because this data was imported from the GEM system, there's some nuances to it. And so the first thing that you need to do for any of these is to click on the link for creating a new invoice. And the system will ask you, are you sure you want to start one? You'd hit confirm. And now you're in a screen that looks kind of similar to the FY22 application. Um, it has a lot of the same pieces. It's got the history log, it's got the comment, uh, but then it has the invoice specific uh, sections. So the first one we're gonna look at is the expenditure section. And so when we click on expenditures, it brings up the uh, different categories. This is kind of what we're used to seeing. This is our budget table. What you'll notice is that it doesn't tell you how much was budgeted for each of the categories at least not from first look. If you do hover over any of the cells, it'll tell you what the approved budget was, it'll tell you what the funds requested are, and then the amount remaining. The way that the budget or the invoices work for Grants For Me is you're not putting in the amount of money that you're requesting, you're putting in the total amount request to date. So for the FY21 funds, you're going to put in on your first invoice, how much funding that you've invoiced for up until this point and the amount that you're requesting. So you're gonna combine that all together. So out of this 537,000, um, we'll say that Augusta has spent uh, 500,000 out of that, uh, let's see, purchase services, they had $50. Uh, so we'll just put that in there. Do they have anything in travel? Let's see, $884. I'll just put 200 here just to kind of throw something in. 9,600 in supplies. So we'll put 6,000. Anything in equipment? Nothing, 300 other. And so it'll give you that total. And so 
again, the way that the invoices work is that you're putting in your expenditures to date. So it's a running total of your funding that you're asking for. It's not just a, this is how much we need this time, which is what GEMS used to be. So that's the big shift between the GEM system and the new Grants for Me platform is that it's a running total of how much you're asking for in order to keep track of how much you've been paid versus how much is um, not paid out at this time. So once you've put in um, all of your funding, um, you can save and go to, you can either go back to the sections page. Um, typically that's where I direct people just so it's a familiar place. Um, or you could go to the next page. Um, that's another one of the options. So the request is the next page. And if we look at the request, um, the general information at the top, it talks about the invoice number, it gives the CFDA number, um, the project number, you don't really have to worry about the voucher number. Um, I guess that has to do with the invoice ID. And then the fiscal summary is really where we're at. So we see that there's their allocation is $1,066,663.81. Um, and it tells you the available budget. So the service period, this is your beginning and end date. Um, this is same as GEM, you still need to start and end date. So if you want to uh, invoice for the month of say August uh, 08, end date, not my begin date. Okay. Or you can use a little calendar pickers if you don't wanna you know, type it in yourself. And then what it talks about here is it talks about the cash received. So this is the amount that you've already received through the GEM system. So this is the part where on the FY21 invoices, you need to make sure that, again, you're putting in the total amount received to date. And let's see, then it gives you the total cash expenditures. So this is what I put into the system on that invoice. So as you can see, um, it's still, the system is showing that, you know, we have $465,000 as cash on hand because I didn't put in all the expenditures. Once more of those expenditures get put in, the cash base, uh, sorry, cash basis <laughs> expenditures will actually show um, a negative, or no, sorry. Um, let me go back actually, because I don't want to say this wrong. So I'm going to put in an extra. One too many zeros. All right, so let me go back to request now, see if it does it right. Okay, there we go. That looks about better. So the total cash basis is how much you're requesting in the invoice, or it's the updated amount of your total expenditures. The amount in red is how much you would need to be paid in order to get up to what you say your expenditures have been. So that amount, um, and then it shows you the amount that's available. So the 94,816.35, that is the amount that is left over that came from the GEM system that we have verified. Um, so that is the amount remaining for Title I funds, which is more than the $34,702 that is needed. And so what it's saying is that it's going to send a check for 34,702.54. So again, it, it's that running total of expenditures that's new that people are gonna have to start getting used to uh, for the Grants for Me system. Um, this does not just apply to the ESEA invoices. This is for you know CTE invoices. This is for special service invoices. Um, any of our systems that use Grants for Me, this is how the invoicing is going to go. So after the request is the related documents field. Um, so currently this is where you would upload any backup documentation that's required. Um, so again, it's just a simple upload. So you'd click the upload uh, new link 
and then you can select your file on your computer. You can give it a name if you want. Uh, you can name it whatever it is that you know seems appropriate. So if you want to put Title One um, Expenditure Run for you know August or you know whatever documentation that has been requested, you can certainly do so and then hit Create. Uh, and then the last page is assurances. Um, this is just saying that you know you certify that the program has been conducted in accordance with all specifications and in compliance with federal and state uh, laws, rules, regulations, and funds have been expended and amounts reported and documents are available um, for audit. All expenditures claimed in this report were incurred subsequent to the effective dates have not been claimed in or under any other program. So just a, a general assurance statement. There's nothing you have to do on this page. So if I go back to sections, um, they do have these validation messages. So I can go in and take a look and see what they are. Okay, so I do have an error, uh, the related document invoice backup. Um, so nothing has been uplo uh, uploaded at this point. Um, so it, at this point, it does require a minimum of one upload. Uh, we can work with our developers to get that changed, so that's an option. Um, in the event that you do need to upload something, the invoice will be reopened, and then this will, you know, obviously you would have to upload something at that point. But we can remove the um, upload requirement. And since that wasn't something that we previously had in GEMS, um, so that is the error that we are seeing currently. So once you've completed your, uh, let's see. let me see if I can do this real quick. Okay, so related documents, let's go ahead and upload something that I just made, just so I can show the process of. So there's my test document. So I'll hit create. So now I've got my in information uploaded. If you need to upload more than one document, you can do so. Um, you can either up, update or you can delete it. So if you want to keep the same name, but you just want to put a different document on there because you hit the wrong button, you can do that. So now if I go back to sections, you can see my validation messages have been cleared. They're no longer showing. And so I can move the invoice to draft complete. And then you check the box, it says yes. I certify to the best of my knowledge that this is accurate and complete. And then you would hit confirm. And at this point, it would go to the state. And so Title I invoices are reviewed by um, our management analyst, Christy Osier, uh, who is unfortunately not feeling well today and not able to join us. Um, but then it goes into her queue. And then so she would log in to start reviewing. So that is the Title I invoices. We're gonna go into the Title IV invoices because they are slightly different um, because of the buckets that they do have. And so I do, I do just want to kind of go through and show what that looks like. All right, so let's go back to 21 and Title IV. All right, this looks a lot better. So I'm gonna create a new invoice. Yes. And let's check the expenditures. So now they have the, the different buckets. So they've got well-rounded education, and then they also have a line for non-publics. So well-rounded for non-publics. They've got safe and healthy, safe and healthy for non-publics, effective use technology, effective use of technology for non-publics. So all of the and again, these are all hoverovers, so they can see exactly how much 
they had budgeted on, under each of these. which helps make the table look just a little bit cleaner as far as um, not necessarily needing to have all of the uh, budget totals or application budgets uh, above as well. So the same thing is gonna happen with Title III. They'll have the three different buckets um, for Title III funds, uh, family engagement, uh, PD, and um, instructional programming. So that's kind of how the Title IV is broken out. Um, so again, it's broken out into the three buckets uh, via the different rows, as well as um, if you have any non-publics, that'll be broken out as well. Okay. And let's see, so as far as the request goes, so um, this is actually a good example um, because this is similar to how the 22 invoices will go. So at this point, no um, Title IV funds have been invoiced for from this particular district. And so their invoice amounts would, uh, that they would put in under the expenditures page is just whatever they needed to start with or whatever that first invoice range would be. Um, so because they hadn't asked for anything before, it'll come up as a negative. So I'll just throw some numbers in there just so we can see what that looks like. Let's throw in 50,000 and then I'll go to the request. And so since nothing has been received and the request is 5,000, that says that the system owes us $5,000. We know we have 242,000 on hand or in our account. And so we can pay out the 50,000, which is what the system will do when it's approved. All right, so that's the difference between the Title I invoices and the Title IV invoices. Um, title II, title, uh, title V, those are gonna be very similar to the Title I. There's not going to be anything really different there. Um, same thing with Title uh, Title One D Subpart One and the immigrant grant as well. So, so only three and four are the ones that are different. And so that's what we wanted to kind of demo for you guys today. Again, the big piece between the Gem System and the new Grants for Me System is that your invoice budget tables are going to be um, running totals of uh, the account. And so the good news is, uh, from what I understand from our developers, and we haven't really seen this in play, but once you put those initial numbers in, the next invoice you create, you don't have to start from scratch. It'll show you what you've already put in. And so, at that point, you would just amend the numbers to see or to show, you know, what is the new total for, you know, your salaries line? What is the new total for your benefits line? Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of where we're at.